Good morning. We have general questions. Question number one, John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to re reduce drug use in prisons in light of recent statistics suggesting that the number of recorded drug fines is set to rise this year. Minister Rosanna Cunningham. Uh, I have asked uh, Colin Connell, Chief Executive of the Scottish Prison Service, uh, for his comments in regard to this. And uh, uh, what he has indicated is that a number of factors have impacted on the number of drug fines, including the use of additional drug dogs, additional intelligence lead searching, and the opening of HMP Low Moss. Additional drug fines are uh, therefore uh, also indicative of the success of these targeted measures. The Scottish Prison Service has a substance misuse strategy in place which reflects the aims of the National Drug Strategy, the road to recovery, and that focuses on robust security systems to divert, disrupt, detect, and deter the supply of illicit substances and to support the provision of treatment services to encourage prisoners to reject the illegal drug culture. Following legislative changes in 2011, NHS health boards are now responsible for the delivery of health and addiction services to prisoners based on assessed needs. John Scott. I thank the Minister for her answer. However, in response to a question from John Lamont, it was revealed that there are almost five discoveries of drugs in Scottish prisons every day, and that the figure is set to rise from 2011. The nearest prison to my constituency, HMP Kilmarnock, has the second worst rate of drug fines in any Scottish prison, with an estimated 213 fines by the end of 2012. And my constituents are horrified by the news that so many drugs can get into what is supposed to be a secure environment. What is the Scottish Government going to do to address this problem, and will they consider the introduction of mandatory drug testing in prisons, which the Scottish Conservatives have been calling for now for some time? Yeah. Minister. Well, as I indicated in my original answer, there's a number of things already being done, which has, of course, resulted in an increasing number of drug fines. And that, that it's important for people to take that on board, that uh, sometimes these figures are uh, evidence of the success of the work that is being done. There's another uh, um, particular uh, initiative uh, which has begun and is being rolled out uh, called Prison Watch, uh, which has proven very successful at uh, HMP Edinburgh and we hope will be uh, able to be rolled out to uh, many other institutions. That has significantly reduced uh, the presence of illicit substances and products in prisons by a very significant factor. Uh, it is not yet uh, uh, available in the surrounds to Kilmarnock, uh, uh, but I will advise the member when that is the case. Um, there is addiction testing policy, of course, already in place in uh, prisons, uh, and that does include a sample of prisoners tested annually on reception and liberation from prison to assess drug use for a range of illegal substances. Uh, and during uh, 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 the time of the, uh, uh, their... Um, uh, their time in prison. Uh, it is not currently uh, done across the entire prison population. Uh, and if that is what the uh, member is suggesting, uh, then obviously you would have to look very closely at resource issues because the, uh, the, the, the ability to uh, test right across the entire prison population on a regular basis would be uh, very resource intensive indeed. Uh, and I think I would want to discuss with the member the precise details of how he imagines this would work. Margaret MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I wonder if the Government Minister can say whether or not her colleagues and she feel the need to review the use of drugs in Scotland in a wider sense rather than pick on particular initiatives as they pop up. Minister. I'm not entirely clear what the member uh, is uh, uh, intending with that question. Uh, the recovery strategy which this government put in place in 2008 uh, has delivered uh, enormous uh, uh, changes uh, to the way things are managed in Scotland uh, and has resulted in great advances but is still ongoing and is therefore constantly and internally the subject of review uh, and indeed as part of that one of the things we're currently looking at quite closely uh, is the issue of opiate replacement therapy uh, and, uh, uh, and in that sense uh, review is constant into drug strategy in Scotland. Question number two, Willie Coffey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it plans to encourage more undergraduates to study computer science and software engineering. Minister, Alice Allen. Education in science technologies uh, such as computing, engineering and math subjects is a priority for this Government uh, as these areas are key drivers of Scotland's future uh, economic prosperity. 
The Scottish Government is keen to encourage more school pupils to consider a career in STEM subjects, and there are various things that we are doing to incentivise this. We provide around £2.5 million to support the four science centres in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee and Aberdeen, which together reach around 600,000 people every year. We also spend £220,000 supporting 18 science festivals in towns, cities, islands and regions across Scotland. Through the Scottish Funding Council, we'll be fun we will be funding a further 1,200 STEM places in Scotland's universities over the next three years. Public Coffey. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? He will be aware of the new opportunities opening up for software developers with the arrival of 4G mobile services, and Scotland's already strong position in the creative industries, exemplified by the fantastic achievements of Gordon Cameron and his work with Pixar and the Brave movie, and of course the master's course in gaming offered by Aberty University. Does the Minister see an opportunity here to further promote software engineering to Scotland's young under undergraduates and thereby to capitalise on an exciting future for the industry in Scotland? Minister. I can certainly uh, agree uh, that uh, the, uh, the examples uh, the member quotes uh, around uh, 4G and, of course, uh, around uh, things like the film Brave uh, provide a great opportunity not only to showcase the uh, talent that exists in Scotland uh, in terms of uh, our uh, computing software engineers, uh, but also perhaps to, to make uh, a wider audience uh, aware of the careers that exist uh, within that profession. Question three, Kezia Gubdiel. To ask the Scottish Government if it's had any discussions with Edinburgh City Council regarding the future of Portobello High School. Minister, Derek Mackay. The Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Employment and Sustainable Growth and I have offered to meet Council representatives in order to discuss possible options, work through next steps and consider what appropriate support the Scottish Government can provide which assists the City of Edinburgh Council to fulfil its responsibilities. Can I thank the Minister for that answer and ask him to clarify whether he is looking at the power to advance well-being in those discussions and furthermore ask the Government whether it can give an insurance to my constituents who have a deep sense of anger and disappointment that this school is yet again delayed, that this Government will do everything it possibly can to see Portobello High School built on the park as soon as possible. Minister. Uh, I thank the Member for the, the constructive tone in which she has asked the question. It is an outcome focused government in terms of the SNP. Of course, we will work to try and deliver the aspirations of Edinburgh City Council and their preferred site is indeed uh, the park. This uh, problem has come about, of course, for, because of a legal determination, so we'll work through the options. Uh, the Community Empowerment and Renewal Bill uh, exploratory consultation was looking at the issue of common good lands, but that maybe will not be uh, timious enough to give a, a result, a solution to this particular issue. But I can guarantee the Government will be proactive and take a constructive approach uh, to the meeting with Edinburgh uh, City Council, and I'm informed that the meeting has been scheduled for the 13th of November, and I'm happy to update the Member on the outcome of those discussions. Question number four, Ian Gray. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to encourage the take up of science subjects in secondary schools. Minister Alice Vallon. We want to maintain a record of high uptake and achievement in science qualifications. As part of this, our recent response to the CIAG report highlights our priorities of building the expertise of teachers, ensuring pupils experience uh, science learning which is inspiring and relevant, and developing young people's awareness of pathways into STEM careers. We are also promoting broader science engagement for young people through the Science Centre Network and the Talking Science Grant Scheme. The work, of, uh, the work of SIAG is indeed very welcome, as is the formation of uh, STEMEC, its successor body, uh, to ensure that their work continues. And that is welcome. But is the Minister aware that it could potentially be undermined by an unintended consequence of Curriculum for Excellence? CFE allows S3 pupils to choose between five and eight subjects to study, and where education authorities have chosen the lower end of that curricular range, parents and teachers report to me concerns that it becomes impossible to pursue two sciences and very possible to choose none at all at a very early stage in uh, the student's school career. If this is extensive, uh, then serious consequences for Scottish science uh, lie ahead. Can I ask if the Minister will investigate these concerns and either intervene or provide evidence that these concerns are not in fact the case? Minister. I am always uh, happy to uh, speak to school communities or, or parents uh, who uh, want to know how the curriculum for excellence and the new qualification system is going to develop. 
Uh, I have to say, however, that the picture across Scotland is definitely one of increasing rather than uh, decreasing the, the choices that are available uh, to pupils and also uh, to strengthening the experience of a broad general education, including a broad science uh, education in the first three years uh, of secondary. There is no evidence that, that science subjects are, are being squeezed out. For instance, one issue that was raised with me recently was the idea uh, that fewer pupils might be able to study three sciences uh, at uh, the end of their fourth year when they do exams. Uh, there were less than 2% of people doing that under the old system. Uh, there is uh, no evidence to suggest that people's uh, choices are, are being restricted in that way. But uh, if the member has uh, any concerns that individual parents have about individual courses, I am more than happy to uh, have that raised with me. Thank you. Um, in the Scottish Government's draft budget for 2012-13, spending on science is to be cut from £6 million to £3.6 million. How does that cut fit with the Minister's warm words and commitment to science? Minister. Well, I, I would take uh, the criticism more seriously. Uh, did uh, the criticism... I would take the criticism more seriously were it not coming from a party which has just cut, which has just cut the capital budget for Scotland by a third, which, uh, if he wants that in decimal terms, is 33.3 something percent. Question number five, Jim Hume. To ask the Scottish Government when an agreement will be in place appointing Network Rail as the authorised undertaker of the Edinburgh to Tweed Bank Railway project. Cabinet Secretary Nicola Sturgeon. We expect an agreement to be concluded with Network Rail shortly. Jim Hume. Shortly, yes. Uh, today, just as on Tuesday, the Cabinet Secretary has refused to tell us when an agreement with Network Rail will finally be reached, without which main works can't start. After a botched tendering process and five and a half years of SNP governance, the people of the Borders and Midlothian are no closer to seeing trains in their communities. Will the Cabinet Secretary today reaffirm the First Minister's pledge to me last September that the Borders Rail project will be delivered by the end of 2014 and on budget. Cabinet Secretary. Um, the uh, agreement with Network Rail uh, will be concluded shortly and the Transport Minister will make the appropriate uh, announcement on that in due course. Uh, the target date uh, that the member uh, refers to uh, remains the, the target date for the Scottish Government and the Scottish Government remains absolutely committed uh, to Borders Rail which will be to the benefit of people uh, across the borders. I, I have to say to the member though, uh, I find it uh, astonishing that uh, a member of a party that was in government in this parliament for such a long time and failed to deliver the borders rail uh, feels that it is acceptable to stand up in this parliament and criticise the government that is getting on with the work of delivering that project for the benefit of the people that it will serve. Christine Greer. Uh, Presiding officer, pity Mr Hume wasn't there for topicals this week. Is the minister aware that many people in my constituency, like myself, believe that even if it takes a little extra longer and a little extra money to build, as you have said, in three years, what the Liberal Democrats failed to deliver over decades. This will be a remarkable achievement for the Scottish Government. Minister. Yes, I do. Uh, this is the government that will deliver the borders rail, uh, and we will do that uh, with the competence that this government has demonstrated on transport projects previously uh, within our term in office. Uh, and I think when that uh, railway project is complete, then people who will enjoy the use of that uh, project will reflect on the fact that previous administrations failed utterly to deliver in the way that this government will. Question six, Aileen McLeod. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to improve the energy efficiency of the NHS estate. Minister L, uh, Cabinet Secretary Alec Neil. Presenting officer, we are in an ongoing dialogue with NHS boards through the NHS Health Facilities Scotland advisory groups, which provide advice and support to NHS Scotland on energy efficiency matters. We have in place a number of initiatives to improve the energy efficiency of the NHS estate such as the heat target for carbon emissions reduction and continuing energy efficiencies, funding for eco-hospitals comprising an, an investment of £24 million over the next three years to make NHS hospitals and facilities more energy efficient, and the Central Energy Efficiency Fund, a revolving fund launched in 2005 with an initial capital budget of £4 million. Can I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response and I note the announcement of the NHS Scotland Carbon Reduction Programme 
which will release £4 million a year to be invested in patient care in Scotland with optimism. And in that respect, I'd like to highlight the announcement of the new Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary. And does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that given this will be Scotland's newest hospital, there is a very real opportunity for it to be the nation's most carbon neutral? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, we will seek to ensure through the project approval process that the design for the new Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary is taken forward utilising appropriate technologies and materials to deliver a sustainable low carbon hospital facility. Question number seven, Margaret MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the Scottish Government discuss with the further education sector the feasibility of establishing short courses on the setting up and management of community businesses and credit unions? Minister, Angela Conson. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, we expect colleges to keep their provision under continual review, ensuring a very sharp focus on meeting the needs of employers, learners and the communities they serve. Uh, in terms of direct support for the development of social enterprise, we are providing the Scottish Social Enterprise Academy with £300,000 in each of the next three years to deliver a, a learning and development programme uh, for the third sector. And this includes £80,000 again in each of the next three years for social enterprise and education. And one of the Academy's key objectives uh, under this theme is to increase awareness of social enterprise in the further education sector. Margaret MacDonald. Thank the Minister for her reply, and most of it pleased me mightily. But I'm not absolutely sure if I could tell people that locally they will be able to access courses because the important thing about this is that local people should be encouraged to learn so that they can come back and set up um, organisations in their own community. It, it, are, is it likely to be local and spread right across the colleges? Minister. Ms MacDonald uh, raises a very good point uh, based on the premise of the, the value of credit unions and in particular uh, local credit unions. Um, I know Ms MacDonald is uh, very familiar with uh, uh, the West Lothian uh, Credit Union, for example, uh, the strength of which is its uh, local base uh, in West Lothian. So I hope what I'm about to say to Ms MacDonald uh, will be uh, to her uh, pleasing, uh, because in terms of the uh, learning and development programme uh, for the third sector, which I referred to in my earlier answer, what this will actually deliver uh, will be 70 college staff attending two understanding social enterprise programmes in 2012-13 uh, with a wider rollout uh, in 2013-14 and uh, further into 14-15 as well. There will also be other work uh, which is about piloting the understanding uh, of social enterprise programmes for young people in need of additional support at Edinburgh uh, College and there will also be some uh, student events also but I'm happy to provide uh, further detail on that uh, by way of correspondence. Question number eight, Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what obligations Scottish Water has to deal with persistent flooding from its sewerage network. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. Cabinet Secretary Nicholas Sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Signing Officer, I would uh, firstly like to express this morning my sadness at the sudden death this week of Scottish Water's Chief Executive Richard Ackroyd. Uh, Richard led Scottish Water with skill and distinction and my thoughts and those of my predecessor Alec Neil and indeed the whole Scottish Government are with his family, friends and his colleagues at this extremely sad time. Exciting Officer, Scottish Water is a responsible authority under the Flood Risk Management Scotland Act 2009. In particular, Scottish Water is responsible for assessing the risk of flooding from sewerage systems resulting from higher than usual rainfall. Scottish Water will then work with local authorities and SEPA to look for opportunities to reduce those risks. Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. And I also would uh, pass on my condolences to Richard Ackroyd's family and those at Scottish Water. There has been a, a persistent issue in Aberdeen's merchant quarter, which is having a major effect on businesses. Scottish Water has offered no short-term solution 
Does the Minister agree with me that it is not good enough and that Scottish Water must act to resolve this situation? Cabinet Secretary Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, yes, I am aware of the particular issues in the Merchant Quarter in Aberdeen. Scottish Water has undertaken some investigations to understand the reasons for the flooding, particularly in light of recent storms. I understand that Scottish Water has offered to meet uh, with Kevin Stewart to provide uh, him with the result of their investigations. Uh, I would encourage Kevin Stewart to take up that uh, offer of a meeting, and I would be happy to meet uh, with the member after that if that would be helpful. I do agree uh, with the member that it is of importance to residents and businesses in the area that matters are resolved as quickly as possible. Thank you. Before we come to First Minister's questions, members will wish to join me in welcome to the gallery the Speaker of the National Assembly of Guyana, the Honourable Raphael Trotman MP.